Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of this shit. Only this time it's reversed. Hooray, Indeed. now Mumkey. Mumkey's trying to get that faggot sigh into some gay ass shit. Who would have thought? I know, right? It's so crazy. It's like our entire world has been turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how <laughs> I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Today I'm going to get Sai into the fresh prince of Bel Air. So, mm -hmm. um, let me just give you some backstory on the show. In West mm -hmm. Philadelphia, he was born and raised. On the playground is where he spent most of his days. Mm -hmm. Chilling out, maxing out, relaxing all cool and all, shooting some b-ball outside monkey. of the I have school. to stop right there. Okay. Because you're expecting me to care about a show that stars as a black man. And yeah. it's going to take yeah. a lot. It's going to be like an uphill battle to make me sure. care about something like that. I think most of these episodes are uphill battles. What? Like especially especially the portal one. It was like all the other subjects. It was easy to get me into, like uh, mm -hmm. mind control and rape and all that. But like portal, I don't know. That's kind of rough. Right. Yes. <laughs> now, Sai, we need an update. Thing you've actually played. We need an update because last week we talked a lot about you having coitus with your girlfriend, and I want to know: uh -huh. Did she listen to the episode, and was she horrified? Uh, yes, yeah, she did listen to the episode after I told her that I was I, that I talked about her in it. And she actually went around in the fucking comment section telling people about my sex life. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. What was Her that username like? username is uh, Mother Joan Hazy or something like that. Um, what did she say about your sex life? Well, one of the comments she left was AMA about size sex life. And okay. I, I replied to her going, how big's his dick? And <laughs> she replied to me saying, not big enough to break a hymen, apparently. Is that true? Is your dick not big enough to break a hymen? No, I think that my dick is too big. It just didn't fit properly, you know? Like, it was so... Y you couldn't get it in the hole in the Earth-shatteringly huge. Yes. Yeah. It was so earth-shatteringly huge that uh, just it didn't want to work. Well, luckily, back where I'm from, we have this little saying called no hymen, no diamond, which means if she doesn't have her hymen, you're not going to marry that bitch. I see. I've I've not yeah. heard that one before, but it does yeah. definitely sound like something you would say. You only want to marry a girl who's pure. So really, you did her a favor by having too big of a dick. But are any girls pure, really? I mean, I that's think why, the that's why we need the saying has a lot of shit fucked up with them. Yeah, that's why we have the saying to scare women into knowing that they, they <laughs> need to be innocent. Yes, because they and want so those far diamonds. It's not been working, but here's open. They want those diamonds so bad that they'll preserve their hymen in order to get that diamond. Hmm. I see. Okay, enough of this shit. Uh, what are you actually getting me into today? Well, a few episodes ago, you made some weird offhand comment about a show that I really like called "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia," and it it seems that you thought it was a show for faggots. Is that what you said? Um, yes. Well, I mean, anything that you like is a show for faggots. So I just sort of assumed. Um, okay. So you, yeah. you based that off of just something that I liked. You, you don't know anything about the show or there's no reason why the like, specifically details of the show made you think you wouldn't like it? Uh, no, just literally the fact that you like it is enough to scare me off from it forever. Do you know anything about it at all? No. Okay. Nothing at all. Now, Sai, this might be an uphill battle because I have a feeling you're more of like, you know, a, a cartoon and anime kind of guy. Do you watch any live action, you know, Western American shows? Um, the only, usually not. The only exception to that is Breaking Bad and recently Better sure. Call Saul. Okay. Which, yeah, holy shit, Better Call Saul has been fantastic. Yeah, the last two episodes have been top tier in the whole Breaking Bad universe, I would say. Yes, I would definitely agree with, like, fucking, uh, the episode before last, the one with Mike and the fucking, uh, Gus. Los Poyos truck, that felt like a Breaking Bad episode, it honestly did. Yeah, yeah, but w w let's not talk about that too much. Oh, so you, you haven't know. watched, you haven't watched any comedies, like, uh, Seinfeld or Curb Your Enthusiasm, anything like that? Nope. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Mm-hmm. So what is it about Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul that you like so much? Um, I don't know that there's anything specifically about those shows that well, have like clearly they're the only them. they're the only you know live action western shows that you enjoy. So what makes them stand out as you know 
tolerable compared to everything else. Well, they're the only ones that I've really tried because look, Breaking okay. Bad had a really interesting premise and I tried it because of that and I really liked it and I stuck with it. And then Better Call Saul is a continuation of something I already know I like by the same people who made the thing I already know I like. So I watched that. But like with with introducing me to new shit, it's more about me finding the time to watch it more than anything sure. else. And like, cause I have so much shit I need to get to. I have such a huge backlog of like literally everything. So yeah. finding the time, you know, it's difficult enough to find the time to justify like, oh, I have 40 games on my desktop right now with 100 in my to play later list. And then after that, I have, you know, shit tons of movies I haven't seen. Still haven't seen Neon Genesis Evangelion. Still haven't seen Ghost in the Shell. Still haven't seen fucking the Star Wars movies. So a shit ton of classics I already need to get to that are already on my fucking to watch later list. A, a comedy like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia it gets knocked pretty far down the list when you consider all the all sh right. other shit I have to catch up on. You know what? I can work with that. That works perfectly because, you know, if time is an issue, uh, unlike Breaking Bad, It's Always Sunny is only 22 minutes long. And also, unlike Breaking Bad, there's not a, you know, continuous storyline. You can just pop in any episode from any season and it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, each episode holds its own. And what's really mm -hmm. great about It's Always Sunny is that the comedy, you know, like Neon Genesis Evangelion, you have to watch that. You have to set aside the time to watch it. You have to, write, like, write a fucking essay about it after you watch it. You have to watch 30 videos on YouTube about what it means. But of It's course. Always Sunny, the comedy comes from what they're saying. There's, there's not a whole lot of visual humor. It's more... Like, I think a blind person, this would be their favorite show. And why I say that is because this is the perfect show to have on in the background. So if you're, if you're editing a video or you're drawing or something, you can just have this on on your computer screen without really paying a lot of attention. But if you're listening to it, I think you're going to laugh your ass off because it's about the characters and how they interact with each other and the things they say and how they scream at each other and bicker and fight. So it's really, it's a show that is is great due to the dialogue and the acting and not so much something you have to pay a lot of attention to. Okay, so what I'm getting from you thus far is you're saying that you don't have to actually watch it and the comedy comes from the idiots on screen bickering and yelling at each yeah. other. Uh, why shouldn't I just listen to The Procrastinators, which is essentially that? Because that's two What's... hours long and this is 22 minutes. Ah, okay, yeah, so less of the bullshit and also, that I sift through. I get it. It's always sunny is actually funny. And ah. you're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh at least once per minute. Whereas procrastinators, you might laugh once per month. I yes, okay, that's a fair point. I can't um, remember the well, last you know, time it, a, a in, PCP in episode procrastinators, was funny. I laugh at how awful everyone is and how much I hate all of them. So perfect. Yeah, perfect. Because it's always sunny. It's a cast of deplorable, evil people, and you're you're not laughing with them. You're laughing at them because of how terrible they are. Mm -hmm. One of the main guys is named Dennis, and his whole character is that he's a. a Ra raging sociopath who like is probably a serial killer we don't know for sure and he also has no problem with like raping women and he turned his name into an acronym <laughs> to justify the method with which he rapes women and it's called the dentist system and he so so these are if you like to hate people this is the perfect show to watch the the most likable character and also my my favorite character is is Charlie Day's character, who is also named Charlie. And he, he's likable in just about every way, but everybody around him is just a, a bickering, you know, sort of evil mess of a human being. But that's why that's why it's endearing, because they're crazy, and, and it's you love to hate them, and you hate to love them. Okay, I admit, like, some of my favorite shows, the protagonist of an absolute assholes, and they've been yeah. enjoyable because of that. Uh, Tomoki in SNO, Kazuma in Konosuba, uh, being the obvious exemplars. But going back to what you were saying previously, uh, this guy is like rapes people. Yeah, is that like an actual yeah. thing in the show? Like that is yeah. broadcast on television? Like he jokes yeah. about rape? Like seriously? Oh, it's it's not even joking. Like so, one episode is called "The Gang Buys a Boat." And he, he wants to, to bring women onto the boat and go out in the middle of the, of the ocean and uh, ask them to have sex with him. And he knows that they'll say yes because of the implication. I see. Yeah. So he, he so knows that these women won't actually have a choice to have sex with him because they're stranded in the middle of the ocean. Wow. That's all that. Wow. That's, mm, that's something. 
Uh-huh. The reason why I, I brought up, you know, why you like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul is because those shows rely a lot on dark humor. And that's why I liked Breaking Bad in the first place is in one of the first episodes, you know, Jesse Pinkman tries to um, corrode dead bodies in his bathtub with, with acid and it burns through. And like that's some of the darkest humor I'd seen up to that point on television. And this show is chock full of really dark humor. One of my favorite episodes... Uh, are you familiar with the show To Catch a Predator with Chris Hansen? Um, as a lolicon, yes. He has, he has tried to catch me many times, but I've given him the slip up until now. Uh, but one, one of, one of my days, favorite... he might catch up to me. I live in constant fear. Well, one of my favorite episodes is called Mac is a Serial Killer, and I've rewatched this one a million times because the script is so perfect. Everything works out in a way so that the ending is just... It, it's the funniest ending I've ever seen on any show. But like it, it turns into like a to catch a predator thing. Only instead of looking for sexual predators, they're looking for a serial killer. And it, man, the ending of that is some of the darkest humor you'll ever see. So if you're into dark humor, I mean, and this is a show where it's not like you have to, don't start at episode one. You know, I, I have plenty of episode recommendations where it's like, here, check out this one. Spend 22 minutes watching this, and if you don't like this, you're not gonna like the show. So I think it's really as simple as that. Okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I can do 20 minutes of spare time at some point. So yeah. if I had to watch one episode of the show, what episode do you think that what what do you what episode of the show do you think would get me into it into it and make me want to watch more? Well, the episode that is famous and pretty much agreed upon with everybody as being the best mm-hmm. is this is the finale of season four, I think, called The Night Man Cometh. Where my favorite character, Charlie, who is like a dyslexic retard who has a- incredible talent with producing music. But like when he writes the lyrics, it's like written in hieroglyphics because he doesn't know how to spell. Um, but he he writes a musical so that he can try to uh, propose to this woman who he is stalking. Like he stalks and harasses her because he's so in love with her and she hates him. So he writes a musical for her and the musical is one of the funniest fucking things ever and it's got danny devito playing a, a troll who needs a toll it doesn't get any better Are you fan of danny devito um not really i'm aware of his <laughs> status as a huge internet meme and yeah, i'm aware that everyone wants show. him to play detective pikachu but other than that not yeah. really i think i think his notoriety and his infamy as a meme online is completely due to this show he was in lots of serious stuff as a younger man but th- this show embraced the crazy wacky wild side of danny devito that we didn't know we wanted to see mm-hmm. we, we see him naked oiled up s- screaming about shit it, it's just it's a crazy man who's doing crazy things but enough about him i'm, I'm saying if you want to laugh your ass off and and watch some of the most brilliant hilarious 22 minutes of comedy I would say the Nightman Cometh episode is where you should start. And okay. Th- th- and this episode was so popular. Episode, um, it, let, let me just say, this episode was so popular and successful that they took it and they made it a live stage show where they actually, you know, they performed it live in front of an audience because everybody loved the musical that they made in the episode and they acted the whole thing out. And you can even watch the, the live show on YouTube. Somebody recorded it. Well, I'm confused. Because the way you were describing it, like this autistic guy who like writes songs and hieroglyphs and shit, yeah, you made it sound like the musical was going to be really cringy and like it, it is, would be it's like terrible. A, yeah, okay, that's what that's what I was expecting. So it's why so would bad that audience, it's good. What? Okay, well, so mm, so I the, the plot of the so. musical. <laughs> okay. Is, yes. <laughs> is that uh? How do I even explain? So there's a there's a young boy who's in love with mm-hmm. a princess, but then a, a character called the Nightman comes into his room and molests him. But first he has to pay the troll toll. In wait, wait, to wait, do wait! So. wait he, the the Nightman molests the guy and not the princess. Yeah, yeah, he molests the little boy. And the idea is that uh, Charlie, the guy who wrote the musical, was molested by his uncle as a kid, and now these repressed memories are coming back. So, like, the show's not just straight comedy. It's got, like, these really weird dark lore and themes to it. Kind of like Monkey's anime reviews, I guess. But, ah. so, th- the idea of the Nightman emerged in Charlie's mind because every night his uncle would come into his room and molest him. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, seeing a lot of you in this show. Yeah. 
Well, Charlie Day is my spirit animal. I, I want to become him when I grow up. Mm-hmm. So then the little boy gets molested, and then um, and then he becomes uh, the Day Man, and then the Day Man sings a oh, song. Oh, to, wait, to... wait, wait. Is, is this that shit I hear about online where it's like, Night yeah. Man, whoa, whoa, something, something, yeah, yeah, that's something, it. whoa. Yeah. Fighter of the Night Man, whoa, champion of the sun. Whoa, you're a master of karate and friendship for everyone. That's it. It's the best song ever written. It's I see. it's God's gift to our ears. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. But it sounds lovely. So there's in great, order to there's watch There's a great this video episode. online of uh these uh like these Korean huh? kids who are like preschool Korean kids singing that song, and it's really great. <laughs> Why were they singing that song? Because, like, their English teacher taught it to them, and then he recorded them singing it. I, that sounds cruel. That sounds no, like great. cruel and unusual punishment that those poor little Korean kids no. did nothing to deserve. No, they got taught the best song in the world, and they listened the fuck out of that shit. Or they sang it. Mm. Okay, so to watch this episode, like, you said it's the end of season four. Do I yeah. need to know any of the characters before going No. In? No, you can watch any episode at any time because the characters are just so thorough with who they are that you can pick up in any given episode. You can pick up who these people are within two minutes immediately. I see. It's funny, even if you don't know much about like their background, like even if you didn't know Charlie was molested by his uncle, you can probably even pick up on it just based on the plot of the musical he wrote. Hmm. Okay, that's fair. Well... Uh, since you said these episodes are only 22 minutes long and that I can jump into any one at any given time and that this one would be the best one for me to jump into, then yeah, I'll go ahead and give episode or the fucking Nightman or whatever episode to watch. Yeah. Okay. So then, yeah, next time you can let us know what you thought and if you wanted to watch any more of them. Fair enough. I can do that. Well, now, shit, si, I don't. I don't think we're gonna make it to thirty minutes on this one. I, it was too, I, I, it was too no, short. I, no, I can. I can save us. I can hopefully get us to the thirty-minute mark. Maybe. I, okay. or I, can, I can at least bump us up a few more minutes. Um, what you got? So you've played more of Portal Two, right? Yeah, I. Uh, you know, spoilers, but I got to when one of the good guys becomes a bad guy, and then I haven't played it since then. Ah, okay. So I have to know, what do you think of GLaDOS? Um, uh, I like the voice. I, and I, I mean, some of the humor is funny. Some of it's like, okay, yeah, you're being cute. That's fine. You know, the writers are just trying to be cute with it. But overall, it's a, it's a fun experience. I like that she got turned into a potato. I was happy about that. Yes, that's, everyone loves potatoes. But I think the more interesting character is uh, the the little robot dude who helps you out. I think, you know, his character arc is more interesting than GLaDOS. Although I haven't seen what becomes of GLaDOS post-Potato, so who knows. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah, Wheatley's definitely a really good character. Yeah. Um, and as for your comment about the, about the humor being kind of eh, um, uh, I'm curious, what's been the funniest joke so far? Oh, man, I... <sighs> I I don't know. It's it's been a little bit since I played it. I don't have anything specific in mind. Oh, well, you're now fun. <laughs> Why? What's your favorite joke? Okay, my favorite joke is one. I I love this joke because Glados spends like what three or four test chambers building up to this joke, and it's fucking great. Is so, it your birthday or something, or like your yeah. parents don't love you? <laughs> yeah, that's the one where she's like building up to okay, the idea. No, no, I, I thought that, of like, an answer. She's got real your quick. parents in storage. And yeah, like, I thought of an answer for my favorite joke. Okay, yes. It's uh, it's when <laughs> she's like calling the parents hotline. Yes, and yep, then that's, the that's the machine. one. That's the one that <laughs> yeah. I, that's my favorite joke too. Yeah, that's pretty that's good. That's <laughs> fucking great. I, I <laughs> what feel exactly awful does it say? That surprise. Tell what you does what. It do, what do they say on the answering machine? Uh, well, Glado says, "Tell you what, I feel awful about that surprise. Let's give your parents a call right now." Boop 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 boop. boop. The birth parents you are trying to reach do not love you. Please hang up. <laughs> Boo. Oh, that's sad, but impressive. Maybe they worked at the phone company. I love that joke so much. It's so Maybe they worked great. at the phone company. 
Yes, because they like altered <laughs> the fucking voice message yeah. machine. And what I love yeah. is the voice message machine is so obviously GLaDOS putting on a stupid voice. So, <laughs> <laughs> and but what makes it even better is they spend like four test chambers building up to that fact. Like fucking yeah. GLaDOS tells you it's your birthday and one, then she sings you the fucking for he's a jolly good fellow thing in the next, and then she's like, Oh, I found two test subjects in storage with your last name, a man and a woman. So that's interesting. So, like, they spend a shit ton of test chambers building up to this. Then you walk into the room, and, Gl and Gladys is, like, initiating surprise in three, two, one. And the lights come on, and it's nothing. And it's like, I made it all up. <laughs> surprise! <laughs> is that where the the cake is a lie meme comes from? That she lied about a birthday cake? Or is that no, something that, else? No, that meme is from the original game. And oh, does not appear in Portal 2, thankfully. Because the people at Valve were sick of that meme, too, by that time. <laughs> um, the cake is a lie meme comes from the fact that throughout the first game, GLaDOS is saying, oh, as soon as you, this is before you know she's evil, as soon as you finish the testing, we will provide cake for like all the accomplishments you have made to science. And throughout the game, you can find these little rat man dens. So like rat man was like a scientist who used to work at Aperture and he escaped and has sort of been like helping you or just trying to like help you escape. And in some of his hideouts where GLaDOS can't see behind the scenes, he writes like, the cake is a lie, the cake is a lie, the cake is a lie. <laughs> and so that's where that meme comes from. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm learning, you know, I, I got to go to knowyourmeme.com and, uh, you know, I, I know my meme now. Indeed. Okay, so you finish the rest of Portal 2 and I will watch a single episode of It's Always Studying in Philadelphia, which is a okay. equal trade, I think. I th no, I think it's fair. I think uh, I think if you like the episode as much as I think you will, you'll probably watch more than that one. Okay, fair enough. And if you need recommendations between episodes, just let me know, and I'll I'll fill you in. I got a bunch of great ones. Cool, I can totally do that. Okay. But maybe we should wrap this up now because I got a fucking piss. Okay, that's fair. Uh, I was completely out of topics anyway. We didn't even make it <laughs> to the thirty-minute mark. I feel ashamed you know of what? ourselves. That's fine. We can just say, you know, Mumkey's really quick and fast at convincing people to get into something, and Sai just takes his sweet-ass time. This is true. I do like to talk a lot. I do love the sound of my own voice. Yeah. And you need to figure out what you're getting me into next week. And if your girlfriend still wants to come on and tell me why I should get into you, I'm down to clown with that. Oh, shit. That might be fun. I'll talk to her about that. Yeah. That Sorry if I cool. seduce your GF, dude, but <laughs> I can't help it. I'm just so handsome. Mm, and charming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to end this train act before it goes on any longer. Thank you okay. guys very much for watching. I've been Sam. Yeah. I've been Monkey. See you. Later.